everybody, it's Jimmy Mack coming to you live Tuesday, 12 noon EST time, always, uh, every week, and we try to bring it to you, of course, for healing and messages from spirit. We're excited everybody's here, and uh, please call in now, get on board, and hit uh, pound one, of course, if you want to raise your hand and get a healing or a message, and we're excited that everybody's here. Um, we have a very new, fresh, new, exciting audio coming out, audio MP3. You can play it on a phone or a computer or a tablet. It's all about education. and It's all about uh, actually taking the blocks out of that. So if you've ever had issues at work, maybe with public speaking, issues with your children, or perhaps even going through master's, doctorate, the PhD, uh, law school, medical school, any of those things, it's geared towards learning and teaching and uh, it's really a very profound audio mp3. So look for that. If you're not already on our weekly mail list, it's info at jimmymachealing.com. So please get on that as soon as you possibly can. All we do is send out uh, one email a week. It's every Wednesday. It's called TGI Wednesday. And it includes audios and videos and comics and silly little things and uh, updates on what's going on with My Liquid Fish. Change made simple, and so that's us, folks, and uh, so we're happy you're here. We're thrilled to bring it out to everybody in the world. Last week's guest was Elma Meyer. Uh, that's now healing.com. She was a dream, of course, to have on, super transformational healer. Uh, it was a great show. If you're looking for the replays also, you can find us on iHeart, of course, and also jimmymachealing.com forward slash interviews. We'll also have the replays. So, good stuff. Next Tuesday, we have my TV uh, show friends, my little crush from back in the day, Jane Sibbett. Uh, she's really awesome, and it's janesdancinghands.com. Really great healer in her own right. And she worked with Abdi and a bunch of other very famous, famous worldwide healers. We're even going to have Abdi on our show. How cool is that? So, we've had a lot of uh, big-name folks, and it's always cool and exciting to put them on the show. And then, of course, the following Tuesday is Reverend Debbie Dean Spear, our resident trans medium, and she's all about speaking with your loved ones who crossed over in heaven, and so that's always exciting and fun. So we look forward to that as well. A little bit about the eclipse, of course, people coming up. I guess they're driving as far away as uh, what, Washington, Oregon, it's supposed to be one of the best places to see it all. People buying glasses, kind of going wild over all that. I see it as a time of reflection, of course, and also a time to re-examine the past, maybe let go of some stuff uh, that no longer serves us. So keep that in mind as well as you sift through everything else. So we're happy everybody's here. Uh, you should know the call-in number by now, of course, and uh, we're excited about today's guest. Today's guest is Zarathustra. So you know you've reached, in that, reached that oneness if you have one name now, right? And I've worked with him personally over the phone. I've got all my co-hosts and co-guests, so we're excited to have him here. He's really big uh, international, of course, and in large groups. And groups of healing, you know, might be 50, 100, 500 people. And he uh, literally walks around, and you can see folks doing what I call the heebie-jeebie. His stuff's similar to mine. It looks like faith healing. It's amazing. And so you know that spirit's really kicking in when you see all that happening, and opening up people's third eye and doing a lot of different transformational changes. Uh, he's internationally known, of course, and a spiritual teacher and fifth-dimensional quantum healer. You can find out more about him at fifthdimensionalhealing.com. That's 5-T-H, dimensionalhealing.com. So, welcome, Zarathustra. How are you, my friend? Uh, I I'm good, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here with you and your audience. I appreciate it. You bet. We're thrilled you're here, friend. How have you been? You and I have worked together over the phone and played around. You're out of L.A. now? Yes, I'm out of L.A. I'm back. I went on a uh, uh, tour to Sweden and Spain, and I came back 10 days ago. And, uh, wow. yes, we did. You, you did your magic on me last time we spoke on the phone and I loved it. <laughs> I love it. No, that's great. That's great. You bring it to my friend. So I'm, I'm thrilled you're here and we're excited to, you know, line things up for folks. Tell people a brief synopsis of what all you do. 
Well, I, um, the founder of Fifth Dimensional Quantum Healing and Awareness, and uh, in a way I say I'm the founder of it, but it, it kind of found me. And uh, uh, it's a uh, modality of healing uh, that uh, blends in energy work, sound vibration, psychic sur surgery, shamanic exorcism, and uh, everything is blended together. And then we uh, infused it with a series of active meditations to help uh, folks to quiet their mind and come to their heart. And uh, as you're aware, whenever we get out of our thinking mind, the monkey mind, and we sink into our hearts, and we become quiet, then everything becomes possible. Right. So basically, they, um, so it's the very fundamental of every human being because we're all looking for happiness, and uh, and the ultimate happiness is the peace of mind. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we're un, under this illusion that happiness comes from acquiring objects of desire, whether it's money or positions or um, a woman or a man or uh, whatever, children, marriage, whatever that we seek happiness uh, into, but they're temporarily and they come and go. And mm -hmm. uh, quite, quite often it brings suffering. But uh, when someone reaches the inner peace, then this, this happiness is eternal. So understanding this part of, uh, our, of um, ourselves, um, then it becomes the foundation of everything, that if I'm able to keep, to help my people uh, who are available to me to find and touch this part of themselves, then the magic happens. Love it. Love it. Yeah, and I mentioned your website, too, and I know you sent me a, a DVD. And, uh, you also have, like, DVDs or audios or things that people can uh, can check out or get sent to them and things to purchase, right? Do they just find that on the website, or how do they get a hold of you? Yeah, if they go on my website, um, um, we simplified my website. It's zaratustra.tv. Okay. And I have, I have two... It used to be, you were correct, it, uh, the fifth dimensional healing dot com. So that was a long one. So we changed it um, to Zaratustra.tv. And um, uh, yeah, there's two um, active meditations. One is a third oh. eye activation DVD. And yeah. there's a heart, heart awakening, self love, self acceptance. Uh, active meditation DVD, as well as well as my first and only book. So these are the three items that I have available at this point. Love it, um, love it. Yeah, and and I love your stuff too. When I watch your videos and things, it it looks like some of my stuff. It looks like faith healing, you know, and just people about uh, or, or having the heebie-jeebies, you know, for lack of a better word. <laughs> they're just moving all over the place, and you know, they're having their spiritual dance experience. It's very uh, awakening, I think, and so that's uh, that's always a good sign that stuff's happening, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Yes, that's yeah. always a good sign that things are happening. Exactly, it's a good confirmation awesome. for for everybody. Good, awesome. Well, we're going to take some callers, and perhaps you can give them some advice and some direction, and perhaps work on them and. Feel free to pass them over to me whenever you're through seeing what you can see, and we'll go from there. So 650, Miranda, you're our first caller. Hi, what's your, uh, where are you calling from, Miranda? Hi, thank you for taking my call. Calling from California. California. Yep. you have a question? So I, yeah, I was just hoping I could get some boost, energy boost um, from your guest. I am uh, on the spiritual path, have been on the spiritual path, uh, for many years now, and um, trying to um, abilities and you know just would uh, 
I'm trying to open up my third eye and was wondering if you can do anything to sort of jumpstart. Well, you you called the you called the right guy today, so I'll, I'll let him uh, work on that for you. Great, great. <laughs> <laughs> hi, hi, Miranda. Where in California are you calling from? I'm south of San Francisco, northern California. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Um, are you standing up or you're sitting? <clears throat> um, I, I can, right now I'm sitting, I could stand, whatever, whatever okay. you'd like me no, to no, do. No, just, no, I just wanted to know your position. All right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right, so why don't we do this? We're, I'm just going to share with you this third eye activation meditation. Um, uh, simply close your eyes and imagine with every breath you take is light or energy is you're breathing energy or light whichever is easier for you to imagine from your third eye and it's going through a tunnel and it goes to the center of your brain as you breathe it in so instead of going through your nose it's going through this tunnel from your third eye and you breathe it in the light goes to the center of your brain your center of your head and as you breathe out now there's like a 90 degree pipe and the air goes upwards as you breathe out and it hits the interior part of your skull and it just like a fountain the air falls down and covers your head instead of going outside of your head outside of the skull it just falls down like a fountain all over and it gives you a feeling that it's cooling off your brain like as if it's a um, taste of mint you know if you make a lemonade with mint or you're chewing on mint uh, or you're having after mint and it gives you a taste, a cooling taste. So it's cooling your brain. So again, you breathe in from your third eye, air goes into the center of your brain, and as you breathe out, the air goes upwards and, and it hits the, the, uh, the roof of your skull and then everything falls down. Everything stays in your head, nothing comes out and it cools you off. And go ahead and do that a couple of times. In a very easy way, just breathe in and breathe out. And now, do you feel something's happening? Do you feel any kind of tingling? Or are you able to no, do it? I actually am not feeling anything. Okay. So you just you just stay calm and quiet and you just breathe in and you breathe out. What it does is basically you're bringing energy and light to the pineal gland, which is tucked in, in between the two hemispheres of the brain. And you're bringing light and energy to pineal gland to get it activated. Uh, if you do this regularly, you're going to start, it's very much possible that you may be hearing some cracks. You may hear like something is moving, something is opening up. Uh, it starts decalcifying the pineal gland. And the pineal gland starts to produce DMT, which is dimethyltryptamine. Because what happens is most human beings by age 12 or 13 the pineal gland becomes heavily calcified through the usage of fluoride. They're dumping a lot of fluoride in the water and our food supply, as well as toothpaste. And what it does, it calcifies the pineal gland. And it as, um, makes pineal gland not to produce as much DMT as it normally should. And the production of the DMT, it gives us the first-hand ex spiritual experiences that we have, and it gives us access to alternate realities. So, uh, but by this, just simply, this is one of the exercises you can do to get the pineal gland, bring energy to it so it starts getting activated. 
Well, thank Love you. Love it. Yeah, Miranda, you want to stand up? We, uh, I guarantee you over time you're going to feel that. Uh, I certainly felt it, and I, I, it's so funny. I saw blue and cooling off, and that was before he even said that, and that's what I was sensing in my brain. Of course, I'm out there seeing wild carcasses and monkeys flying and everything else, so that's okay, but I can definitely feel that when he talks me through it. So go ahead and stand up, face you north, and we'll rock some stuff out for you real quick, okay? I have no idea where north is. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's okay. You, if sun comes up in the east, turn to the left. So we're going to make due north wherever you're standing, love, okay? And this is for everybody that's listening. And also the exercise that he just went through is for everybody that listens today and also on the replay, okay? So if you just simply are standing there in strong mountain pose, feet are about hip width apart. If you just say, my name is Miranda, you should feel a pull forward. My name is Miranda. Okay. Awesome. If you say my name is Nemo the fish, you'll feel the pull backwards. My name is Nemo the fish. Okay. Nice. So let's just go ahead and open up the third eye. We're going to release anything blocking it, resolve and delete it, have her learn all the lessons she needed to from it being closed, release her from the service to being shut down. It's going to pull you forward when that comes in. I'm doing it now. Yeah, I feel the pull. You're going to feel it pull, and pull, 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 and it's going to bring you back to neutral once that's open. Okay. Back to neutral. Awesome. So that's something you can feel. You see what I mean? And so to me, what it looks like is our eyes are opening straight up and down. To me, the third eye opens almost like a theater curtain, and that's what we just did for you. Great. Really Makes sense? Jimmy. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, we're here to help you, love, and we're thrilled you called in today. And thank you so much for playing along at home, too. Okay? Reach yeah, out if we can help you in any way, okay? I appreciate it. Thank you. Have a great day. You, with you. you too. Thank you. And, folks, he's in L.A. right now, so check on the website for upcoming events as well. And I'm telling you right now, you go see him in person, it's like uh, it looks like a life-changing event, so... 770 is our next caller. Hi, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, Sandy, Atlanta. Okay. What's going on in Atlanta? How are you? You have a question? Well, I have a question, yes. Can you help somebody heal a concussion? Um, okay. Uh, are you asking me or Jimmy? I'm sorry. Well, I'll let you go first, friend, and then I'll, I'll clean up. No problem. Okay. Um, hi. Um, um, it, it's not. It's really not me, the person uh, who is healing. It's that that heals, and that which has uh, is everywhere and is the ultimate uh, divine love. So that has the ability to heal anything. So uh, this is my answer to you. Anything, a anything is possible. Healing is a natural thing that happens on this planet at all times. Our bodies are continuously healing uh, itself. So yes, it's possible, but not that me as an individual have the power to heal anyone or anything. Does that answer your question, Sandy? Well, uh I guess, but I thought it said something about you could help with healing. It will stand up. We'll, we'll work on it for you, love. You have a concussion or you had a concussion, and how are you now? Uh, my husband has a concussion. Okay, so we need to work on him. Well, let's, let's make that clear. What's his name? Randy. Randy. All right. We're going to go through you and work on Randy. How about that? Okay. Oh, okay. All right, so if you're standing up, face due north, and you can just own it and say, Randy has a concussion, it should pull you forward. Randy has a concussion. Okay. So pull forward? Yeah, so we're going to release it, resolve it, delete and erase it, disentangle it all out now, have him learn all the lessons he needed to from it, release him from the service to it. We'll stand straight back when you're done. Thank you. Okay. 
to the call? Yeah. Awesome. How is he now? Where is he now? Is he at home? Is he in the hospital? Where is he at? Oh, he's at home. He's at home. Okay. And how did the concussion occur? <laughs> he uh, blacked out in the bathroom uh, at okay. work. Very common. Yeah. So let's take him out of blackouts, too. Okay. And I'm just going to grab that real quick. It's going to pull you back when that releases. You'll feel it. Okay. There you go. So we'll see what happens now, love. He certainly needs to take it easy. I get that. And that, you know, concussion is all about kind of having a hit in your noggin and getting jarred around. And, you know, football players have gone through it, pro wrestlers, you know, you name it. And uh, that can be a jarring experience. I don't know that it's, uh, I don't get that it's a brain thing as much as he might have a blood pressure heart thing and that happens first. Does that make sense? And then he had the concussion once he hit something. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I'm telling you that's what happened. So regardless, I mean, you know, he certainly needs to stay in her physician's care and see what happens now, but I feel like we've at least... Was it an anxiety her. thing too or what? Yeah, it definitely tests his anxiety. It's not so much blood pressure as heart. It's kind of like they're showing me that fainting goat where you power the goat or you charge the goat and they faint and fall over and that's kind of what happened to him. It was almost like a quick time out, if you will, and it wasn't even that so much as when he fell, he hit his head, and that's what was, that was, that was the event of the concussion. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, so I have happened. a question. I also yes. have a question. How, how is his digestion? How, how does he digest food? Uh, okay. Okay, does he get bloated? He has, he has, uh, Every time he eats, he's got... No. No. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I get that he does need digestive enzymes, too. I pick up on that as well. So he might want to look into that as well. Uh, if he doesn't have into now, yeah, it's like it's slowed down digestive-wise. That makes sense. Okay? Okay. All right. We appreciate you calling in, Sandy. Thanks so much. Okay. All right. Enjoy your day. Thank we'll keep him in our prayers. Thank you. Thank you. Five, you bet. 562, you're our next caller. Hi, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, I'm calling from Long Beach, California. What's your name? Yvonne. Yvonne, how are you today? I'm doing good. Thanks for asking. You bet. You have a um, question? My, yes. My question is, when am I going to meet someone new for love? Oh. <laughs> so, go, um, buddy, go. <laughs> um, when you're, so let me repeat this one more time to make sure I, I understand it. When are you going to meet somebody new for love, correct? Yes. Okay. All right. Do you love yourself? Yes. Do you accept yourself the way you are with yes. all your, your, you know, let's say call good or bad or things you like about yourself and things you don't like about yourself? Do you, do you fully accept yourself the way you are? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Normally, what happens is that if we're in a, are you, how long have you been waiting for this new love to come? Uh, for about two years. Okay. And prior to that, you were in a long-term relationship? Yes. Okay. So, normally when um, we have this question or we're waiting or nothing's happening or or we keep meeting different people and, and there's shallow relationships or it's not really blending. Uh, it's, it's a purifying, purification process we need to go through. Now, when I say purification process, um, what I mean is that uh, if you're going to go to a wedding, 
what do you do? You're going to wear your nicest clothes. You're going to wash things or dry clean them. You're going to look really nice. You're going to clean yourself up and everything. And you go to a wedding with your nice clothes. Uh, we do the same thing. We clean our home. We wash our bathrooms and kitchen and everything. We, we change our sheets, uh, wash them. We clean things up. And the same thing happens with us spiritually that every once in a while we'll come to this period in life that we need to clean things up and we need to go to this purification process in order to go to the next level, in order to create room for the love or what we're seeking in to come in because the cup is full or the cup's not clean enough. So, uh, and that this is what I see in your case, that you're going to this process of cleaning up and looking at certain things, certain kind of patterns or behaviors that no longer are serving you, and they need to go away. So this is a waiting time, or this is an opportunity to uh, clear the way getting rid of some of the obstacles or, or baggages or issues of the past to get rid of them, to reflect on them. So now then when the new love comes into your life, you don't fall into the old pattern and you don't bring in the old stuff and blend them into to this new relationship. So you're clean. You're, you're clear. Does this make any okay. sense? Yes, it makes a lot of sense. Do you resonate with this? Yes. Okay. Great. Awesome. Jimmy, you're out. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're out of Long Beach too. So he's out of LA. So check the website for appearances. You're not all that far. Um, so keep that in mind, love. You want to stand up or we'll rock some stuff out? You might verbalize you love you, you love yourself, but I don't get that you do, and that's okay. It's on an unconscious level. You want to stand up, face due north. You want to have your feet about hip width apart. Any nicknames? Okay. What does everybody call you? Yeah, what does everybody they call you? They call me Yvonne. Yvonne, okay. So if you just say my name is Yvonne, you should pull, feel the pull forward. My name is Yvonne. Okay, I, I feel it. There you go. And if you say my name is Nemo the Fish, you'll feel the pull back. Uh, you said my name is what again? Nemo the Fish. It'll pull you backwards. My name is Emo the Fish. Okay. Nice. So let's make it safe and comfortable for you to love yourself. It's going to pull you forward really hard. It's going to fill you up and bring you back to neutral once it comes in. Okay. And it's going now. Okay. And thus dropping you into heart center. Also, uh, open to receiving love. I don't get that as well. That's kind of going to drop you back right now. There's a little weakness in that. You'll feel a pull backwards. Okay. And then I'm going to drop that into yes, and it'll pull you forward when it comes in, love. Okay. And I'm doing up for you and everybody that's listening now or on the replay. And that's bound to help you. I feel like you're about three weeks out from meeting somebody. I tell all my beautiful women that I meet with or talk to you on the phone or Skype, uh, you certainly want to go to every event. So if somebody invites you to a barbecue or a big blowout beach party bash, you don't think for one minute, I don't think I want to go to that. You need to go to that because you could be one introduction away from who knows who. So it's really statistically the law of averages of being out there bumping into whoever or whatever and you know somebody might be fresh and move, moving to the area, that sort of thing. That's what shows up for you about three weeks out. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes sense. Awesome. Thanks for calling in today. We appreciate it. Oh, yeah, one, uh, do we, hmm? uh, Jimmy, do we have time if we can just have another minute, minute with her? I would love it, it. yeah, could, absolutely. Yeah, folks, press one if okay. you want to be on the calls. Yeah. Yvonne? Yes. Yeah, hi. So you are you standing up? Yes. Yeah, okay. If you put your hands on your chest area and close your eyes. Okay. And, and, 
and just come to this place, this uh, place of of love, of loving yourself and feeling feeling love. Can you feel this for yourself? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So repeat after me, um, and everybody else can do that if they want to. The listeners, and and you say, just go ahead. I love myself. I love myself. I love myself. I love myself. I love everybody. I love everybody. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. I forgive everybody. I forgive everybody. Because I'm love. Because I'm love. Because I'm light. Because I'm light. Because I'm God. Because I'm God. That's why I love myself. That's why I love myself. And I forgive myself. And I forgive myself. I say yes to love. I say yes to love. Yes to love. Yes to love. Yes. Yes, go ahead. Yvonne? Hello? Hello? I heard you on that. I think she, I think the call dropped, but everybody that could play along, that's awesome. Yeah, sometimes the energy will do that. <laughs> yeah, uh, just a message to her. Um, I, I am offering a two-day workshop, uh, how, how to magnetize, magnetize your soulmate fifth dimensional style, and that's going to be on October 7th and 8th here in Los Angeles. And, uh, Love that. Yes, I'm doing it with uh, uh, Marla Martinson, uh, and you know Marla, and she's a very oh, yeah, matchmaker. Yeah, she's, yeah, she's awesome. Hard. She really is. Beautiful Beautiful sister of ours. So uh, in this two-day workshop, we're just going to help our brother sisters how to uh, come to this place of purity and uh, self-love and to magnetize their soulmate. Um, Love it. Find out more on the website, folks. That's outstanding. Hey, uh, there's a lot of folks on hold. Press 1 if you want to raise your hand and... Ask a question. 262 is our next caller. Hi, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, this is Amy. I'm calling from Wisconsin. Hey, Amy. you have a question for Zarathustra? Um, yeah, I guess I, uh, I keep having periods of depression. And um, it's just bogging down everything. I guess I'm trying to figure out what I do to get out of that. I mean, I need to, I need to be working and making money. Um, I did just get out of a relationship that's probably pretty addictive. Um, so that pull is still there, which I guess I'm wondering when that, when the negativity from that can stop and when I'm gonna, ever going to feel good, if I'm ever going to feel good. Yeah. Uh, hi, Amy. How long have you had this depression? Um, my memory, if my memory serves me right, it, I was probably about 12. Since, for 12 years or since you've been 12? No, since, since I was 12, it's always been there. Okay, um, right. Uh, how is your digestion, Amy? How is my digestion? I, yeah, how do you digest food? Do you have... Um, I'm on herbs to make sure that I can digest okay, but I generally have to be careful. Yeah, when when you go, if you go in the mirror and you pull, look in your tongue, is it white? Do you see a lot uh, of white on your tongue? I probably don't because, let's see, I'll just check. I see some beige, beige, beige whiteness. Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Yeah. So here's two things I'm seeing. Is one is that 
this depression is very much related to your digestion and it's very much possible that you may have an early symptoms of a leaky gut or heavily uh, do you eat a lot of uh, bread pasta rice kind of products no more veggies more veggies okay yeah. so the fogginess that you have is very much this is what i get it's pos it's very much possible to your digestion and related to candida and and what is happening if you're not digesting things very well uh, because 80% of your immune system is in your digestion and 95% of the neurotransmitters are in your digestion. So if you're not processing food very well, so it has direct effect on your moods and there's possible there's overgrowth of candida that is creating that brain fog. So that is something that you can look into and correct by changing diet <clears throat> or paying attention uh, or more education. You can go on YouTube and just Google uh, YouTube different teachers about candida, about brain fog, and you get a lot of information as well as leaky gut. That's going to give you a lot of info. So uh, a lot of times these problems, they're all straight directed to the digestion. And so that's one thing. The second part that I can also help you out with is that do you do any kind of meditation? Yes. Okay. So is it like a guided meditation? You sit there and you just visualize that you go somewhere or you bring your attention on your breath. How do you do your meditation? Um, I do... Uh, both a silent meditation where I'm trying to clear my mind and then I'll sometimes join in either play a guided meditation or join in a group guided meditation. Okay. All right. So, um, so you're used to this. Let's say you're just sitting somewhere and you're looking at your mind. Can you observe your thoughts? Can you witness your thoughts? Um, I think so. Yeah. Do you know what you're thinking right now? Um, yeah, right now I'm thinking I need to add probiotics and take, you know, take some grapefruit seed. <laughs> I'm thinking right, about that. Right, right. Okay. So, so, so you can see what you're thinking right now, correct? Uh -huh. um, I think yeah. so, yeah. Yeah, you, you're aware of your thoughts, correct? You, you, Generally, you, yeah. You, yeah, I mean, not always because the thoughts are passing through our heads and sometimes they're going super fast or changing but you're aware that you're thinking correct you you yes. have the ability to be aware what you're thinking yes and you you have the ability to know how you feel for example right now how do you feel in this moment uh, right now I feel kind of okay somewhat peaceful because I'm listening to you guys Right. It's like a and, and when I right. hang up, then I feel sad again, like I'm alone in the world. I understand. I get it. So I'm here. Uh, oh. Somehow that dropped. I think it dropped at his end. He'll call back in. But go ahead, love. Uh, I also pick up uh, definitely the candida stuff. Uh, also, it feels like you're allergic to um, gluten and dairy, so it's kind of interesting considering the state you're in. And, uh, so, yeah, and I would, Dr. Oz did an entire show on the probiotics, and, you know, they have studies that have proven that you really want to do those between lunch and dinner. So sometime about 3 in the afternoon, I feel like you got some now. So one, two, three, at least three of those in between lunch and dinner go a long way. Also, I love um, the uh, beyond probiotics, uh, most people need to be on digestive enzymes. They either test for HCL or non-HCL. You test for non-HCL, meaning you want a little bit of everything. You want to find a digestive kind of enzyme that does uh, has amylase in it, lipase, and protease, and all these different little things in it beyond just straight HCL. So it feels okay. like your constitution on many levels is somewhat weak. And yeah. also, 
there's just a tremendous uh, brain gut connection. So if your gut is off, of course, um, you know, then, you know, or a lot of times if our, we're feeling depressed, like in our head, then our gut hurts too, and you get that queasy gut, you almost feel nauseous. Does that make sense? I do. I always yeah. do, yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And so also the, yeah, and I would get the probiotics, they're saying, with uh, prebiotics in it. And, um, you know, that's the food for the probiotics. And what happens a lot of times is people are cramming that into their food. Like I said, the Dr. Oz show talked about it. Also, they're taking digestive enzymes with probiotics, which is silly, because then it's breaking all that down before it ever gets to you. So, does that make sense? Does that help, Love? Uh, yeah. I feel um, like I'm doing, I've been doing that stuff, though, but I guess I can do it more. I would do um, more, and I would do it at different times of the day. So there's nothing, there's not, it's not a spiritual route that needs to be corrected? And everything spiritual has something going on, but I don't get that that's a spiritual thing per se as much as it is mechanical for you. And Sarah Thuster okay. can chime in on that. Um, I can, can, can you hear me? Am I back? Yeah. Yep, you're back. Yeah, okay, sorry about that. I got, so there's, okay. um, so besides this part that is mechanical and physical, um, as Jimmy explained, uh, the gut-brain connection, uh, this is an area I highly recommend for you that you go on YouTube and you Google and there's a lot of amazing teachers out there and they give you a lot of information about uh, uh, brain, brain gut connection and you can find it through leaky gut syndrome and it's tremendous amount of education when you understand this part because it will help you for life to eliminate a lot of health issues and uh, which normal medical doctors are not going to, it's not in their education to teach you these things, unfortunately. Now, as far as Im with immediate help is when you get up in the morning and you feel depressed, there's a feeling, there's a feeling of being down. And so earlier we were talking about that you are aware of when you pay attention what you're thinking, you can see your thoughts. And when you pay attention to see to your feel, feelings, now you're aware how you feel, correct? Yes. Yeah, okay. Now, so you have the ability to see your thoughts, you have the ability to notice your feelings, as well as you have the ability to see how your body feels. So, and your body is not the same as it was 10 years ago. It's been changing, correct? Yes. Okay, but there is a common point here which is not changing, and that is the ability to notice, your ability of knowing, your ability of observing, witnessing. I'm using different words so to see which one is going to click for you, but ultimately we're awareness. We're not this unit that's walking around and living for a number of years and then the unit dies. We're the awareness of the unit. You're the awareness of your thoughts, your feelings, and the body. This awareness does not change. So, what, what I can suggest to you to bring into practice, your daily practice, simply when the thought comes, oh, I'm so depressed. Simply tell yourself, instead of saying that I'm depressed, just acknowledge that depression is here. You, you shift your language with yourself. Depression is here. Depression is visiting me in this moment. And then just simply, simply be aware of it. Don't try to push it away. Don't try to numb yourself with ice cream or chocolate or medication or movies or, or whatever. You're simply aware that depression is here. You acknowledge it. Depression is visiting. Now, 
and then you will see it will go away and then something else comes and let's say if fear comes or sadness comes and you say again sadness is visiting you're not trying to push it away and you're not trying to hug it and you're just simply acknowledging its presence and then very quickly you will see it disappears you can use we're using an analogy it's like you're the blue sky and clouds are passing through the sky and the blue sky always remains blue it doesn't matter how many storms we have how many bad days or bad weather we've got there's thunder there's snow there's thunderstorms at the end of the day the clouds go away and the sky remains blue so your awareness is always here you're always aware and different feelings come and go or different thoughts come and go but are you really your feelings are you really your thoughts how, how could you be your thoughts if they come and go all the time and you're able to observe them you know it's like if you're sitting in a coffee shop and you're window watching or you're watching people and somebody's walking passing by you or mother is walking with her children in a stroller or something are you the person sitting in a coffee shop looking through the window or are you the mother walking in the, and pushing the stroller which one are you the one in the window inside yeah, exactly so let's say right now there's a feeling there are you the feeling or the the one who's observing the feeling An observer yes beautiful so stay bring your attention on this part of yourself which is the observer not what's being observed and this is the problem we have because we don't have the education from childhood to distinguish the two so what happens is we have forgotten our identity and we have picked up this false identity we're so concerned about what we feel what we think instead of bringing our attention back to the source the place which is aware of the thought not what is the content of the thought so if you can just remember that you're aware of your feelings doesn't matter if feeling good or feeling bad they all come and go and then you will see that you're not your feelings anymore and they have no power over you they're just simply clouds passing through the sky oh cool here is the one what is it is this it's making any sense to you yeah it's starting to make sense i feel like i've heard it before but i feel like i wasn't able to even think about it before or uh, True. maybe i haven't heard it before but i, I yeah. feel like it it's starting to make sense now so i don't know what yes. it is to me that i can yeah. comprehend this cuz people have said to me for years you are not your feelings you are not your thoughts and i'm like yeah okay great <laughs> you know it never really yeah I never had a yeah. reference point for what the hell that meant. So, um for the, for the next for the next week consciously make this your practice. So, okay. so it it clicks in. It's going to take a little bit time to unclutch from an old conditioning which let's say I don't know whatever age you are, but all these years you have you been identified with your feelings and thoughts and your body you really believe that you are these three different things and then for the first time all of a sudden the awareness comes and we're becoming aware of all these three but we're not it we're simply aware of it and these three are changing all the time your thoughts are continuously changing it's like you're watching the news on TV and it's continuously changing or you're changing channels but you're sitting on a couch watching these different programs on different channels you're not going anywhere 
you're st still stationary, everything else comes and goes. Now, if you go and watch a news channel, most of the time it's pumping fear and anxiety. And then, you know, you're watching it, and after a while you start having indigestion and anxiety and fear, and then you may change the channel and watch a movie from Audrey Heppard and dancing with feathers there, and it's a lot of love, and then all of a sudden you feel calmness and happiness. So your feelings changed. So it's the outside stuff that influencing how you feel. So what you want to do is simply come back to this place of the witness, this position of the awareness. The awareness is here and is aware of what feeling is arising and passing through not what's the content of the feeling. You're simply aware of anxiety is here, and then it goes away. And then calmness is here, and then it goes away. And then something else comes and goes. You make a practice of that. You simply, any feeling that comes, you just acknowledge its presence. You don't try to push it away. You don't try to make love to it. You simply acknowledge its presence, and then you will see that you're like a t brand new Teflon pan, and nothing can stick to you, and you're free. So is it the same thing with uh, my recent relationship I broke up with? There's all kinds of reasons that we broke up, but I feel, I get a feeling of being drawn back to it. So in order to overcome that or whatever, in order to get through that, I just acknowledge the feeling and instead of fearing it or turning it into something it's not, it's like, oh yeah, I feel like I miss him. And so you okay. just simply say the feeling of missing him is present. Okay. And, and you just stay there. The feeling of missing him is here. You acknowledge that and you stay still. And then you will see, like, two minutes after it's gone and another feeling comes. Okay. None of them have any power on you because you're the blue sky. And the blue sky always remains blue. No matter how many... You're from Wisconsin, you said, right? Yes. Yeah. And do you have bad weather there in wintertime? Uh, sometimes, yep. Yeah. We do. Yeah. So does it stay? Does it stay always bad? No. No. It comes and goes, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Yeah. And no matter how many times you've seen storms or whatever, the sky is always remains blue, doesn't it? At, at the end of the day. Yeah. So the same thing. Uh, Amy, correct? Yes. Yeah. A Amy, the awareness, is always here. You've always been aware. Your sense of being aware and here has never been changed regardless of the scenario of the drama that has happened in your life. The, the, the sense of I am has always been here. You're always here. You always, you always know that you are here. It doesn't matter if you were five years old, you're 10 years old, you're 20 years old, you're married, you're going through childbirth or whatever. The sense of I am, the sense of being is never changed. Do you ever feel like you're not? Do I ever feel like I, I'm not aware? No, do you ever feel like you don't exist? You always know that you are, isn't that? In, in the midst of your sadness or agony, can you just not know that you are? I don't, I don't know. Right. I guess well, sometimes well, I feel like I, I wish I didn't, so I don't know if that's right. not that. Yeah, well, examine it for yourself in the coming weeks, and you will see. Can you ever not be? Can you ever not know that you are here? 
It's, it's impossible. Okay. It doesn't matter how, how old you are and what you're going through, you can never not know you are here. You can be dreaming, daydreaming, but you're always here, no matter what. Okay. So that sense of awareness, that sense of being, never gets touched. It never gets tainted, no matter what kind of horrible experience you may go through. Your sense of being, your sense of awareness, never changes. It's always untainted. So you bring your attention on this part of yourself instead of what's coming and going. Feelings come and go, thoughts come and go. So instead of putting your attention of, oh, I'm feeling like I'm really missing him, bring your attention on the fact that you're, you are able to observe, I'm really missing him. You're the observer. You're the blue sky, and the blue sky doesn't care if there is sunny or it's a lot of clouds going through it. The blue sky is always blue. So at what, is there a point where I'll know that I'm healthy enough to even pursue a future relationship? Because it feels like... I would, I would be working on you, love, because otherwise you're just going to attract that which you really don't want. And also I feel like if you had abusive or what I call I love hating you, I hate loving you with this last boyfriend, um, yep. you know, it's it's like you would rather do that than be alone. And so I think the round the lake way of what he's really saying is be more observant of what's going on with you. And if you yeah. work on you, make things better for you, then you wind up attracting somebody who's a whole lot healthier than your past relationship. Does that help? Yeah, it helps. I guess I'm just... Um, Hoping there's a happy okay, process somewhere in there. There will be. We appreciate you calling today. We're going to wrap up the show, but thanks for calling in and listening, okay? All right, thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Bye Amy. Uh, thank you. Folks, that, uh, we're going to wrap up the show here. I want to thank Zarathustra for joining us. Please tell them the website again so they can check you out live. Yeah, it's zarathustra.com. TV, Z A R A T H U S T R A dot TV. Perfect. Thanks so much for being on the show, friend. I really appreciated uh, batting around things with you and hearing concepts and working on folks, and uh, really enjoyed it. So thanks for being on today. We appreciate you. Well, likewise, Jimmy. I really appreciate this opportunity, and uh, I've definitely learned things as. <laughs> So it's, it's my honor. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Folks, that wraps up our show for today. Tune in next Tuesday. We're going to have Jane Sibbett on. Uh, you might remember Ross's uh, wife on the, on the TV show, Friends. Uh, she's awesome and an awesome healer in her own right, so we look forward to that. Join us here every Tuesday, 12 noon Eastern Standard Time, Jimmy Mac Healing Show. You can also find us on our iHeartRadio as well. So, and I just want to wish everybody the rest of your life will be the best of your life. And remember, make progress every day. Thank you. Bye. Bye.